Welcome back to QDL, your source for quality news. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief for Quality Digest. You know, in today's economy, and by that I mean uh, our global economy, most manufacturers struggle to reduce operating costs due to uh, increased competitiveness and decreased margins. And often uh, they are faced, or they think they are faced, with making one of two choices. They can reduce costs and maybe sacrifice quality, or they do their best to delight their customers, but at the risk of losing some customers due to an increase of quality costs. Um, but top manufacturers believe that there is no trade-off, that you, you can have both uh, reduced costs and maintain or even increase quality at the same time. With us today is Jason Spera, CEO and co-founder of Aegis Software. He's also the author of a recent Quality Digest article, Leveraging MES and QMS to Optimize Cost and Quality. Jason, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Dirk. Um, so one of the things that, that stood out to me in your article is right at the top, you mentioned that manufacturers typically take one of three approaches or maybe a mix of these approaches when they're trying to uh, maintain quality or increase quality and at the same time reduce costs. And you say they, they may standardize quality processes, standardization kind of makes sense, that helps reduce costs, uh, improve visibility and traceability into uh, into their processes, you know, kind of the dashboard idea, you can see what's going on, and also collaborate with suppliers across the enterprise. Um, but you mentioned that these things don't all necessarily, they may accomplish part of what they're trying to do, but they don't bring them all the way. So why is that? Why aren't these kind of these typical approaches working? It's, and you put it very well, it, the enterprises typically start addressing each one of them with some initiatives that are usually well thought out and they start proceeding along the lines of, of um, uh, dealing with the analytics part or what have you. But it's the manner in which it's, it's approached is not typically, I, I should say, I mean, it's actually not often um, done in a holistic manner. So what happens is disparate solutions are selected to address each one of them and in and of themselves uh, they may do a good job of addressing the quality problem in each area, but what you have then is you have silos of this functionality that are all in the sphere of quality, but there's data redundancy and there's transactional problems, and then there's the integration need between them because all of those functions share data. So that's when the overhead starts um, and the lack of elegance in the operation of the overall quality solution. Uh, because at least we look at that, those three things as all issues that have to be addressed in the quality equation. Uh, and when you're in the process of digitizing your operation, and your vision for industry 4.0, which, you know, quality is a significant part of that, is uh, doing it in a holistic platform manner is more efficient, both in cost, but also uh, meaning the purchase investment of the system itself, but then also the ongoing usage and uh, uh, and, and lack of integration and all those benefits as well. So it's really about how you're doing it rather than what functionally what you're doing. Okay, so you, so you mentioned silos and and kind of one of the one of the disconnects or the silos, if you will, that you mentioned in your in your article is kind of this this disconnect between the quality management s solution, the uh, you know the, the QMS and the MES system yeah. and that the fact that these two are separated is kind of what causes uh, causes some problems and, and kind of gets away from this holistic approach uh, uh, that you're talking about. So in what way does, let's say the, the, the quality manager or the quality folks not having visibility into the MES, what kind of problems is that causing them? Well, it's significant. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, you know, I was a former manufacturing engineer, so I used to live a lot of my life in meetings with the quality folks. Um, and when there was, uh, unfortunately, typically when there was a, some crisis uh, in quality uh, that was, you know, born of the factory in some way. And um, there was the, you know, any kind of quality diagnostic when it gets to a certain point needs information from the outcomes in production, right? So whether it's the material content and the trace, the scope of the work order that was affected, um, actually finding out physically on the product 
where did that indictment come from? Uh, it could be test and diagnostics. I could, you know, I could go on and on, but your viewership knows these things. So there's that diagnostic and I don't want to say argument. It's uh, I'll find some other euphemism for the discussions that happen in those meetings where you're trying to find out what happened in production that led to this. Well, the, the, the little blurb I just went through there, if you think about it, 90% of that diagnostic process relies on things that come from the MES system. If you're going down the material lot traceability, that's an MES function typically. It has to come from the, the shop floor, um, the production run and the scope of it and uh, what actually happened, any process variables from the IoT data feeds from all the production equipment um, and on and on. It could go down to the fact that some of the tools weren't uh, calibrated that were used. If you don't have the quality system intrinsically linked to the data that the shop floor execution system has, your adventure of getting to the bottom of that is very convoluted and ex extreme amount of manual overhead. If, if the QMS and the MES are literally one and the same, all of that information is you can interrogate it in the same system. So that discussion between the manufacturing folks and the quality folks becomes very efficient. Um, there's no human manipulation involved. The data is simply all just there. Um, and these days with the, the advent of uh, you know, the value of the digital thread where the design data, 3D CAD, the electronic CAD passes all the way through the execution system and, and so forth. Um, having access to that digital twin and the thread is hugely important in a quality uh, diagnostic and any quality process, really. So, I mean, I, if I'm hearing you correctly here, you're saying that it's not inconceivable that if there was some sort of quality problem, that the quality folks themselves could trace this all the way back to the original design input. I mean, they could actually go back conceivably and say, oh, I see the problem here. Uh, you know, these, these tolerances are, are all, all wrong, or you've got tolerance stack up. Nobody noticed that, right? Are you saying that they, they literally from their from let's say an integrated QMS MES system, they could actually troubleshoot uh, uh, or, or look for a root cause all the way back that far? Absolutely, I mean, should, they should be able to. I, I would have loved if we could do, when I was in shop floor, supporting a shop floor, I would have loved if we could have done that, but that involved bringing all sorts of meetings together. And then it became root cause is a nice term for it, but others might not use such a gentle term for that process of figuring out where, where the issue lies. Because frankly, it could be a design for manufacturing problem, uh, or it could be a process problem. You know, it could it, it could be a material supply problem. Uh, it could be a vendor, uh, you know, the raw material problem. And when you don't have access to that in, and I mean rich access, not just a roll up of a report that comes into the QMS system, like literally being able to interrogate the product down to its design, um, that really makes quality discussions corrective action design, uh, and then later the effectiveness analysis. Like once you do a corrective action, then again, you have the digital twin thereafter and said, oh, okay, this was the before state. This was after the corrective action. Um, otherwise, without all those data sources in, in, knitted together, you really can't do that effectively. Certainly you can't do it easily. So, I mean, so one thing that immediately came to mind as you're saying this is this is, actually bi-directional as well, right? So, I mean, not only can, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like what you're saying is that not only can, let's say the quality folks trace us all the way back to, you know, let's say a, a, an equipment calibration thing on the floor, can they also then issue corrective actions back down the line to the floor or is this still handled kind of, you know, a, a, a back channel? In other words, it's more of a troubleshooting but not necessarily a closed loop. Oh, in our solution, at least, it is a one, it's very collaborative um, in that depending on how you configure the system, uh, all manner of people can be involved in the Kappa cycle from, you know, the original non, well, you know, the indictment came from the floor. And then if it rises to a certain level, it induces a proper nonconformance, and then it goes through the whole workflow. And along those lines, you can have people from, from any department and all of them have access to the, the entirety of the trace data of that problem unit or range of units and what have you, they can induce um, quarantines, uh, 
you know, of the affected units immediately before the problem spins out of control. And when I say that, they can do it through the system. So they're not going into another system to do it. And then once they figure out what they want to do with the corrective action, it goes through electronic sign off. So engineering can say it was OK. So absolutely. It, it's it's you said, is it a closed loop? It's actually could be a lot of interlocking closed loops. But the beauty of it is it's all in one system and it's digital. It isn't people incessantly running into meetings and having arguments about, you know, where it's all based on data. Uh, I always found that, you know, data does tend to solve 90% of all arguments, right? When, when everybody's looking at a single source of truth, there's not a lot of that bickering back and forth as to what department caused this, uh, because it just, it is what it is. And I think that's one of the values of a singular solution is it, there is that single source of truth. There isn't a reservoir of data that the manufacturing folks have in their system that isn't always synchronized with what the quality people think they're getting because it's all that that's what leads to the problems. Uh, when you have one single source of truth, it's much, much easier. So, so if we, if, if, if I know, I think you're doing a pretty good job making, making the case for integrating these two, what does that integration look like? Because I, I know immediately some of our, some of our viewers are, are going to say, so what are you saying? I'm going to have to throw away my existing QMS and my separate EMS system and buy a system where they're integrated, you know, together. So I'm going to chuck all this or is, is there the ability to take your legacy systems and your legacy EMS and, and QMS and, and somehow integrate them together to suck the data in, so to speak, into, into one platform so that they have visibility into that. And, and if that is the case, is one, is one solution, you know, let, let's say an, an off the shelf integrated solution, is that better or the same as, uh, uh, as uh, vacuuming up data from two different systems and simply integrating it? Well, of course, I'm coming from a slightly biased perspective, but sure. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was actually an engineer on the shop floor, so I know the way it goes. Is I, I think it's it's very hard to make any reasonable argument to say that two systems uh, for anything in, in operations digitization is better than one. Um, so it's simply because of the data redundancy, the need for IT and integration and all those problems. Um, so a single system is if you're Greenfield or if your operation, uh, your journey on the digitization process is such that the corporation has decided that, you know what, we're going to act like we're Greenfield and we're going to go with all new set, you know, platforms for everything or a platform for everything. That's ideal, but that's not the way the world works all the time. Um, so our company knew this from, I mean, we're, we're 25 years old. The platform is designed so that within a given functional area, the customer basically has almost like we call it like a slider where they can say, okay, in, in terms of incoming quality inspection, we're going to keep using what we have. We have a module on our ERP. We like it very much. It's integrated into everything. There's no way we're getting rid of it. Fine. That you could still have Aegis run everything else. And you can do that area by area. If you just want to use Aegis for what we call in-process quality, the stuff that most people think about with quality, you know, inspection, repair, test, diagnostics in the process, then just use Aegis for that. And then our platform becomes a data provider to those other solutions or a data consumer. So we can get the uh, supplier quality information out of that ERP module and bring it into ours so it's available elsewhere. It, but getting back to your original question, it's not as elegant as a single solution when, it, when the customer is using everything uh, in, in one platform, uh, but it's certainly common. Uh, and that actually extends to non-quality areas of the system too. Uh, it, people have pre-existing investments, sometimes in very large systems, and it's unreasonable to expect them to throw everything out and move to one platform uh, unless they've made the corporate decision to do that uh, or they are greenfield. So... And, and I want to I want to kind of wrap this up here a little bit, but I want to hit kind of the kind of what I think might be the high points here for for you to uh, to explain to our viewers is you know you're 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 on the elevator, you're talking to a quality guy, you're telling him what 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 you uh, what what your software does. What are two or three key reasons? Or, or, or key things that, that that quality guy, you've convinced him, but he's not the one who holds the purse strings, right? He's got to go back to his boss and say, look, 
wow, I was talking to, you know, I was talking to this guy and, and he's saying, you know, there's software out there that integrates the, the, the QMS and the MES. And this sounds like really great. What are maybe the key things, a couple of key things he could tell his boss that is going to convince the, the, the person who holds the, P, uh, the, the purse strings that this is something worthwhile at least looking into? Yeah, that's a great question. And it is actually something, I don't know if it happens in elevators, but it happens quite often in discussions uh, uh, with us uh, when people come to us with their with challenges with quality. And I'll answer it maybe in two major ways. If the corporation, if that person in the elevator has recently had an expensive quality related incident of late um, that costs the company a lot of money. And this does unfortunately happen. It could be a, an erroneous recall or recall containment that took weeks of manual effort to try to get it down. And the corporation still believes they recalled three times as many units as they had to, you know, things that have very tangible or just a customer embarrassment. Um, they ship bad units uh, they had escapes. Uh, it could be anything that, that is easily attached to a dollar value of a disaster. In that case, it's very easy to say that a singular platform, uh, we can prove it, that it literally would not have occurred. Um, so that's kind of the very hard ROI that would happen. The other one, though, is if it's a company that has, that hopefully has not suffered some kind of incident like that, and they're just looking forward to all um, they're, they're getting interested in a singular MOM QMS system. Um, the benefits come down to the agility and the speed and frankly, the ease of running a proper quality system by going this route. Um, the, especially if you're in a regulatory environment, but even if not, just that there's a shadow cost in most, most companies that is in those quality meetings, the compilation of data, the reporting, uh, every time there is, you know, a non-conformance or a problem on the floor, those meetings I was talking about where there's all the back and forth with engineering, all of that smooths out because now it's just people traversing a digital system. They have all the data they need and they can get to the conclusions very rapidly instead of what's typically uh, a lot of labor. And, and frankly, it's aggravating for the quality department. So that, that aggravation goes down a great deal, if not goes completely away, and they can focus on the art of quality, as I call it, where you're actually trying to you're actually trying to make the corporation better at what it does, not just moving paper around and having meetings and arguments. And so, those would be the two things. If there's, sometimes there's a very hard, easy to quantify ROI, and the other one is 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 a matter of elegance and agility in all the operations of quality. Yeah, if you so make your life personal. Personal. If you make your life a little bit, if you if, if you make the quality guy's life a little bit easier, uh, he's he's able to do his job more more efficiently, essentially. Yeah, because if you're exactly if you're employ, employing a, a quality group in your corporation, which certainly that people are, is would you rather them moving, frankly, moving paper and reports around and spending all their day or a lot of their day doing that, or would you rather them work with with engineering and the shop floor and coming up with ideas? about how the company can make quality better. Because you know, it, they are very two different things. And one is actually kind of fun and value add, and the other one is drudgery. And uh, our system can bias it towards the fun and the value add part. All right, well, uh, Jason Spera, CEO and co-founder of Aegis Software. Uh, th thanks for joining us today, interesting discussion. You. It's my, my pleasure. And uh, there is a link uh, underneath the player page down there. Uh, there is a link to Aegis Software. So you want to go up there and take a look. There's actually also a really interesting, it's also referenced in the in the article that uh, that Jason wrote, uh, interesting Aberdeen Group uh, research study, uh, quality management, digital transformation accelerates the best in class edge, which is uh, some really interesting data in there. So uh, click on that link too and go out and take a look at that uh, Aberdeen Group study. So uh, once again, thanks uh, all of you for joining us today. Uh, if you have a topic you'd like us to cover on the show, send your suggestions to qdl at qualitydigest.com. And I will do my best to uh, bring those people or bring up that topic and we'll talk about it. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you at the next QDL. So long.